Hey there, pre-med. In this video, you will learn how to have the best possible test day experience on your MCAT exam. The MCAT test day has three parts, before the exam, when you're in the exam, and then what happens after. So tip number one is I want you to plan out exactly what's going to happen on your test day. That means thinking through what you're going to do in every section, what you're going to do during the breaks, what you're even doing the night before and the morning of your exam. I want you to figure out what foods and drinks you're bringing to the test center. Do you need caffeine or sugar at certain points during the day? What kind of foods feel best for your stomach when you're under kind of that stressful situation? All of these things we can plan out in advance. In fact, there's only three things on the MCAT we can't control. We can't control what content will show up on test day. I wish I could tell you radioactivity will be on the exam, but we honestly don't know. We can't control the other people in the room if they're having a rough day or the proctors are in a bad mood. We can't control that. And we can't control the ultimate outcome. We can't control the scaled score. We can't guarantee a specific number because it's a scaled score based on the cohort. But every other part of the exam, how you're approaching passages, how you're thinking about your breaks, what you're doing for every single question, we can plan that out ahead of time and practice it until it feels great for testing. So that's tip one is to practice that and create a plan for all the controllables. I actually have a test day game plan template that I use for all my students that you can use to build your plan. It's linked below and it will walk you through every single piece of your test day experience. Tip number two is I want you to practice the morning of your exam, essentially do a dress rehearsal one week before your test day. So if your exam's on a Saturday, the Saturday before, I want you waking up at the same time you're gonna do on the real thing, going through your morning routine, eating the same breakfast, wearing the same clothes, and doing the same commute that you're gonna do on the real test day. Whether you're driving, taking public transit, it's great to do that commute a week ahead of time because you can test out the traffic and parking situation and anything that could come up while getting to the testing center. Also, the testing centers are often in these like weird, large office buildings that are not very well labeled, so it can sometimes be hard to find the testing center. Going a week ahead will help you go figure out where the testing center is, make sure you know exactly how to get there and how long it will take so you're not stressing about that on the morning of your exam. Tip number three is what to wear for test day. Wear really comfortable clothes. Okay, this is not the day to dress to impress. You're sitting for seven and a half hours. You wanna be comfortable. And to make sure that your clothes have minimal pockets, jewelry, dangly bits, because every time you enter and exit the testing room, they're gonna wand you down and they're gonna check your pockets and any jewelry you have. That takes some time and will eat into your break time. The other last thing about clothing is it can be really cold or really hot in those office buildings. So definitely wear layers and the layers I would recommend are actually using like a zip up or a pull off cardigan versus something that you have to pull over your head. You're not allowed to obstruct your face in the testing room when you're in the exam. So things that you can kind of just shrug on and off your shoulder are going to be better for you because if you have a sweater on that you'll have to pull over your head, you're not going to be able to do it in the testing room. My next set of tips is all about what to do once you're in the exam, before we get there, I just want to remind you to subscribe to this video. My name is Amanda Brem. I'm an MCAT coach and founder of The Brem Method. I've been teaching the MCAT full-time for over five years now. So if I have not covered any of your test day questions in this video, please put them in a comment below. I'll make sure to answer them. I'll either reply or I'll make a new video to answer your question. Tip number four is when to get to the testing center. MCAT exams start at 8 a.m. local time. That's what they say on your registration, but they recommend that you get there at 7.30. I recommend that you get to the testing center at 7.20, but not entering the building until 7.30. That 10 minutes of time will give you buffer time in case something bad happens on the commute or you're running behind, but it will also give you time to just breathe and relax. If you get there at 7.20, you can take a walk around the block, sit in your car if you're driving, drop into a coffee shop if that's nearby, and just take a few minutes to settle yourself, settle your mind before entering that testing room, because once you enter that testing room, it's all systems go. That brings me to tip number five, which is to do and use the full 10 minute tutorial. All right, there's no rush to getting started to ChemPhys, and those 10 minutes can be invaluable in terms of calming down your brain and setting yourself up for success. Even if you're an MCAT veteran and you know exactly what that tutorial is gonna say, it can be really nice to sit there for 10 minutes, adjust the monitor, adjust your keyboard, make that cubicle your own space for the next seven and a half hours where you are going to be successful. 
And it does help to use the tutorial and make sure that you feel comfortable with the mouse and the keyboard and the shortcut keys and the interface, and that everything is the way you want it before you enter into the section. Also, there's a passage in that tutorial that can be really nice to read as a warm up passage, right? It gets the brain going before there's consequences to being able to understand it. Now, this also ties into tip number six, which is don't mind dump in the tutorial. All right, I get asked this question all the time of like, hey, should I mind dump onto the note board during those 10 minutes and write down as much as I can remember? If so, what should I write? And my honest recommendation is not to mind dump and it's for a few reasons. Number one is mind dumping works really well when it's a memorization based test, when you know exactly what's gonna be on the test, right? Cause then you can just mind dump what you need to know and that will help you on the exam. In the MCAT, we don't know exactly what's gonna be on the test. So you could spend 10 whole minutes writing down equations and information that won't even be tested, and now you've just wasted your time, stressed yourself out, and made your brain a little more tired. Number two is that sometimes I see students, they'll write things down in a mind dump, and then because they wrote it down in an equation or a concept, they'll try to force that into a question versus just reading the question and looking at what's in front of them. The final reason I don't recommend mind dumping is even though it's technically allowed, some proctors interpret the start of the exam as the start of the section. And so they may see you mind dumping frantically and come over and confiscate your note board or talk to you about it. And that's just a super stressful thing to have happen right before your exam. So even though you're in the right technically to mind dump, I don't think you wanna get into a fight with the proctor five minutes before the chem -piz section. So it's just better not to do it. It doesn't help that much and it could cause problems that we don't wanna have on test day. You can write a few things on your note board. I don't mean don't write anything, just don't frantically write things down. So what I did is I wrote breathe across the top, you got this across the bottom. I wrote down my acidic and my basic amino acids, and I wrote down a few unit conversions that always tripped me up. Tip number seven, take as many in-seat breaks as you need. What's an in-seat break? Let's do it together. You're gonna close your eyes and take two deep breaths. Look at that. Less than 10 seconds, my brain is a little quieter and it's easier for me to read what's in front of me and move forward onto the next question. So if you ever find yourself stressing, panicking, getting fatigued, not being able to read what's in front of you, just close your eyes and take two deep breaths. Those 10 seconds will be so worth it to refocus you on the exam. Tip number eight is to check the clock at a minute to go. So a little pop-up will show up at five minutes to go. And then when you're at one minute to go, what I want you to do is finish the question you're on and then click the navigation tab to make sure you've answered all the questions. You do not get penalized for wrong answers on the MCAT. So I wanna make sure that every single question has an answer, even if you're guessing, because that will only help you in terms of your score. Then at about 30 seconds to go, raise your hand because you're not allowed to get up from your seat for your break until a proctor sees your hand and comes and gets you. That will take about 20 to 30 seconds and with a 10 minute break, that eats into your break time. So tip number nine is to have a void plan. What that means is I want you to think ahead of time of situations in which you would void your exam versus situations in which you will not void your exam. Just so you know, voiding your exam, you'll never see a score, you'll never see how you do, Schools will not see that you void it, all right? Schools will not see that you made an attempt, but though that attempt will count towards your total attempts that you can take for that year or for your lifetime on the MCAT. So it will count towards your attempts, but schools will not see it. So what does that mean for voiding? If you really know for sure it was not a good experience, and usually for me that means three things. One, you missed at least 20 questions across the whole exam. So in all four sections, if you didn't even answer, like didn't even guess on 20 questions, probably means your score is not gonna be what you want it to be. If something really disastrous happened in your exam, like you got a migraine or severe cramps or a panic attack or a fire alarm went off or your computer froze, right? Big things that affected your performance, for 100% sure you know that it affected your performance, that's a good situation to avoid. But if it just felt hard, like if you did your best and it just felt hard, 
it's hard to tell if that's going to result in a bad score or not. I'm sure you've experienced this if you've taken practice exams. Sometimes the hardest sections you actually perform your best on because it's a scaled test. If it's hard for you, it's probably hard for everybody else. So just it feeling difficult isn't necessarily a good reason to void your exam. So you wanna think for yourself, okay, what are situations in which I would void and what situations, even if I'm feeling nervous, will I not void my exam and have that plan before test day so that you're not stressing about it at the end of the psych social section. Tip number 10, plan something fun to do after your test day. All right, this is a big accomplishment and you're not getting your score back, you're not getting your results for a whole month. So you wanna make sure that you feel like this is a celebratory thing, you've completed the task so that your brain can relax a little bit in that month instead of stressing and agonizing over your score. So do something fun with friends or plan an activity that you've not gotten a chance to do because you've been studying so hard and have that to look forward to after your exam is completed. One sub tip to tip number 10 that I always like to mention is make sure to talk to your support system about how you want them to ask you about how your test went. Sometimes the worst question that you can be asked after your exam is, so how do you think it went? Because we don't know, we don't know what the score will be. It felt hard, right? And so it can be very stressful to answer that question. So make sure you talk to your support team and say, hey, this is how I want you to talk to me about the MCAT or, hey, don't ask me about it until I bring it up, right? Make sure that they have a bit of a script so that they can support you in the way that you need after this big, huge accomplishment. All right, those are my top 10 tips to have the best possible test day. Make sure that you do a ton of practice so that you can work on your test day game plan. And as always, happy studying.